Hello, thank you for taking time to watch this short video. My name is Steve Power and I will be covering a high level overview of workplace pensions reform, commonly known as auto enrolment. Over 15 minutes or so, I'll be answering some of the many questions you no doubt have to do with this topic. Thanks, Steve. Well, my first question is, what is auto enrolment? There are new duties on employers to help more people save for their retirement. All employers will need to act to comply with the law. From October 2012, changes to the pensions law will start to affect employers. The changes mean that employers will have to enrol their workers into a pension scheme and pay into that pension scheme. And even if you already offer pension scheme arrangements for your workers, you will still have some new obligations to meet. So, why are the pension regulators doing this? Auto-enrolment is aiming to encourage greater private pension saving, particularly amongst those on low or moderate incomes. People are living longer and they will want to enjoy a comfortable retirement, but many people are not saving for their retirement, and many who are saving aren't saving enough. It's estimated that over 50% of adults have no private pension savings at all. The aim is to help more people have another income on top of the state pension when they retire. The state pension is a foundation for your retirement. If you want to have more, you need to save during your working life. Otherwise, you may reach retirement facing a significant shortfall in your standard of living. The basic state pension in 2012-13 is only £107.45 a week for a single person. Is that enough to live comfortably on? The government is getting employers to enrol their workers automatically into a pension at work, so it is easier for people to start saving. It is estimated that 8 million workers will be auto-enrolled into these pension schemes. You can opt out if you want to, but if you stay in, you will have your own pension, which you get when you retire. So, when is this coming in, and for who? In fact, how will this be implemented? Basically, there are seven steps to prepare for auto-enrolment. The first step is, know your staging date. Secondly, assess your workforce. Third, review your pension arrangements. Fourth, communicate the changes to all of your workers. Fifth, automatically enrol your eligible job holders. Six, register with the pensions regulator and keep records. And finally, contribute to your workers' pensions. Okay, so Steve, tell me, what do you mean by knowing the staging date? The date when the new law is switched on for employers is known as the staging date. The staging date for employers varies according to the number of employees they employ. The earliest staging date is the 1st of October 2012 for the largest of employees, i.e. 120,000 or more workers. Other employers will then gradually be brought on board from the largest to the smallest until approximately 2017, by which time all employers will be operating under the new legislation. So here are the staging dates as seen on the Pensions Regulators website. As we can clearly see here on the first table, the 1st of October 2012 is for employers that employ more than 120,000 workers. And in November, it's for those that employ between 50,000 and 120,000 employees. And January 2013, it's between 30 and 50,000. And so on and so on until we get to February 2014, where it's between 250 and 350 employees. For those employers with between 50 and 250 employees, there is another table. And as we can see here, the 1st of April 2014 is for those employers that employ between 160 and 250 people. And so on until we get to April 2015, where it's those that employ between 50 and 53 people. And for those with less than 50 employees, the staging date will be between June 2015 and April 2017, with some exceptions as listed in these tables. To check your own staging date, we recommend you go to these pages on the Pensions Regulators website. What do you mean by assessing your workforce? You need to assess the category a worker falls into in order to determine the duties that need to be applied to that employee. So how can they be categorised? Basically, there are three categories which are determined by two thresholds as defined by the Pensions Regulator. These two thresholds are an auto-enrolment threshold which is proposed to be £8,105 for the 2012-13 tax year. Basically, this is the same value as the emergency tax code. The second threshold, called the qualifying earnings lower threshold, is proposed at 5564 for the 2012-13 tax year. With this information, you can start to categorise your workers. The first category is that of the eligible job holder. 
These are workers aged between 22 and the state pension age and have earnings above the auto enrolment threshold, i.e. above £8,105. Auto enrolment only applies to employees who are classed as eligible job holders. The second category is defined as non-eligible job holders. There are two groups here. Either they are workers aged between 16 and 74, have earnings above the qualifying earnings lower threshold but below the auto enrolment threshold, i.e. above 5,564 but below 8,105 pounds. Or they are aged between 16 to 21 or the state pension age to 74 and have earnings above the auto enrolment threshold, above 8,105 pounds. Non-eligible job holders can opt into auto enrolment pension schemes i.e. they can also become a member of the same pension scheme that eligible job holders are automatically enrolled into. Furthermore, when opting in, the employer is also obliged to make contributions into the pension scheme on behalf of these workers. The last category is the entitled worker. These are workers aged between 16 and 74 and have earnings below the qualifying earnings lower threshold. Entitled workers can join a pension scheme However, that pension scheme need not be an auto-enrolled scheme or a qualifying scheme. A qualifying scheme is a scheme that meets a minimum set of requirements in terms of how they are operated. However, unlike opting in, the employer is not obliged to make contributions to these pension schemes. So whilst opting in and joining may sound the same thing, they are actually quite different with different duties on the employer. So what do we need to do in order to review our pension arrangements? Well, the first thing you need to do is, if you don't have a current scheme, you need to select a qualifying pension scheme to use for auto enrolment. A qualifying pension scheme must meet three sets of criteria. The first is the automatic enrolment criteria, which includes elements such as the job holder not having to provide any information or even complete an application form to become or remain a member and have no barriers on joining the scheme, such as age limits, etc. The second is the qualifying criteria. This includes things such as being an occupational personal pension scheme, being tax registered and satisfy certain minimum requirements. These requirements will be different depending on the type of pension scheme you select. Please be aware that there are additional criteria when looking at non-UK based pension schemes. The third set of criteria is to adhere to the minimum requirements for each pension scheme type. There are basically four pension scheme types with differing minimum requirements. Defined Contribution Occupational Pension Schemes Defined Contribution Personal Pension Schemes Defined Benefit Pension Schemes and Hybrid Pension Schemes For example, one of the requirements is the contribution levels. Depending on which scheme you choose will determine what the contribution levels are going to be. But basically they will be between a minimum contribution of 7 to 9% with the employer contributing a minimum of between 3 and 4%. Please be aware that employers can define what constitutes pensionable pay. The qualifying earnings is a reference to earnings of between 5,564 to 42,475 for the tax year 2012-13. Let's look at this in more detail. The contributions are to be phased in by 2018 and they then must meet one of four contribution criteria. When based on qualifying earnings, the minimum total contribution is 8%, of which the employer contributes 3%. However, you do not have to base it on qualifying earnings, i.e. between 5,564 to 42,475. Instead, you can base it on the first pound of earnings, in which case there can be different contribution levels. This is called certification. The employer can define which pay elements of pay are pensionable and self-certifies that the pension scheme meets the minimum requirements. There are three tiers of contribution when using certification on defined contribution schemes. Tier 1, where the contribution is based on less than 85% of pensionable pay. The minimum total contribution is 9%, of which the employer contributes 4%. Tier 2, where the contribution is based on 85% or more of pensionable pay. The minimum total contribution is 8%, of which the employer contributes 3%. Tier 3, where the contribution is based on total earnings. The minimum total contribution is 7%, of which the employer contributes 3%. Remember also, there is employee tax relief on these contributions. But these contribution percentages are not starting at your staging date. It's actually being phased in. When based on qualifying earnings, the first phase of contribution is from your staging date to the 30th of September 2017, where the minimum total contribution is 2%, of which the employer contributes 
The second phase of contribution is from the 1st of October 2017 to the 30th of September 2018, where the minimum contribution is 5%, of which the employer contributes 2%. The third phase of contribution is from the 1st of October 2018 onwards, where the minimum total contribution is 8%, of which the employer contributes 3%. When following the certification process, the phases for each tier are shown here. Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3. Okay, what happens if I already have an existing pension scheme? If you have eligible job holders who are already active members of an existing pension scheme, then you'll need to confirm that it is a qualifying scheme. This will mean that you will not have any automatic enrolment duty for these eligible job holders, but you will be required to issue them with certain information. However, if it does not, then you will have to auto-enroll these eligible job holders into a qualifying scheme. To make this decision, an employer will need to understand the qualifying scheme criteria and satisfy themselves that the pension scheme meets or can be amended to meet those criteria. We strongly advise that you discuss this with your current pension providers. Does this mean I can use my existing pension scheme to auto-enrol my other workers? The answer is yes you can because you have confirmed that it is a qualifying pension scheme. However, you may decide not to use your existing pension scheme, in which case you need to set up another qualifying pension scheme, as just discussed. There will be a vast number of pension providers that will have qualifying pension schemes that you can choose from. However, the government is providing a qualifying scheme called NEST, the National Employment Savings Trust. NEST guarantees to accept all employers that apply for this scheme and is aimed for low to medium paid employees. What type of communications will I need to provide to my workers? One of the employer's duties is to provide certain information to workers, irrespective of the category into which those individuals fall. Every employer will almost certainly have an obligation to provide certain specified information within prescribed time limits to groups of their workers. So for example, entitled workers, you will need to provide information telling them about their right to join a pension scheme. For non-eligible job holders, you will need to provide information telling them about their right to opt into an alter enrolment scheme. For the eligible job holders, i.e. those that have been automatically enrolled, you will need to provide information about their auto-enrolment process, what it means to them and about their rights to opt out. For those already members of a qualifying pension scheme, you will need to provide information about that scheme. The information must be provided in writing. You can include information sent by email, but must not include merely signposting to an internet or internet site or displaying a poster in the workplace. So how do I auto-enrol eligible job holders? Before the end of what is known the joining window, which is the one month period from your staging date, you must give information to the pension scheme provider about eligible job holders, give enrolment information to those eligible job holders, and make arrangements to achieve active membership for eligible job holders effective from the staging date. Auto-enrolment into a qualifying pension scheme is compulsory, but ongoing membership is not. A job holder has the right to opt out of the pension scheme membership, but cannot opt out of the auto-enrolment process. There is a specific timescale within which job holders can opt out of active membership of the pension scheme, known as the opt-out period. Job holders must opt out by giving an opt-out notice to the employer. In most cases, the opt-out notice should be provided to the job holder from the pension screen provider. This acts as a safeguard to ensure that the job holder's decision to opt out is taken freely and without influence from the employer. When an employer receives a valid opt-out notice, they must refund the job holder with any contributions deducted from pay within a specific timescale. Equally, any money paid over to the pension scheme must also be refunded to the employer. If a worker opts out, they must be auto-enrolled every three years based upon the staging date. Once auto-enrolment has been completed, an employer will have ongoing responsibilities. Some of the responsibilities are to continue paying contributions into the pension scheme, to manage the opt-out process and to keep records. There are additional safeguards in law for contributions deducted from earnings including any eligible job holder contributions that have been deducted must be paid across to the trustee or managers of the pension scheme by the 22nd of the month for electronic payments or the 19th of the month for cheque and cash payments.
Can we postpone the auto-enrolment process? The answer is yes. Postponement is an additional flexibility for an employer that allows them to choose to postpone automatic enrolment for a period of their choice for up to three months. For example, the employer is able to postpone auto-enrolment for their employees, new starters employed after the staging date, or for workers becoming eligible job holders. What do I have to do to register with the pensions regulator? Within four months of your staging date, you must provide the regulator with certain information, including details of the employer's business, details of the scheme or schemes you are using to comply with the employer's duties, the number of eligible job holders you have automatically enrolled. You can write, you can call, or you can use the online process which will be available later in 2012. So what safeguards are in place to protect employees? From July 2012, legislation came into force that places specific duties on employers that safeguards workers' rights relating to pensions auto-enrolment. For instance, at the job interview, employers must not screen job applicants on the basis that they will opt out of the pension scheme. Companies must not provide inducements or act prohibitively to stop employees from automatically enrolling into the pension schemes. Take any actions that can be seen to induce an employee to opt out of the pension scheme. For example, extend or renew a contract in the case of short-term workers, offer a one-off payment or a higher salary, or offer a promotion. Conversely, an employer cannot put a worker at a disadvantage simply because they have been automatically enrolled, such as withhold a promotion, withhold a pay increase, redundancy or dismissal. It doesn't even matter whether the inducement is successful or not. This is deemed to be unfair treatment of workers. If an employer does so, then the worker can enforce their rights in an employment tribunal. So Steve, can you please summarise what we have just discussed? This was a high-level overview of auto-enrolment, concentrating on the seven steps to prepare you for this process. We have discussed the staging date and where you can go to get this information. We also covered how to assess your workforce into the three categories of eligible job holder, non-eligible job holders and entitled workers. We then moved on to reviewing your pension arrangements to make sure that you have qualifying schemes to auto-enrol your workers into. Then how to communicate these changes to your workforce including their opt-out options. We looked at the actual process of auto-enrolment. You need to register with a pensions regulator using one of the three methods discussed and you need to keep records. And we also discussed the phased level of contributions that both you and your employees need to make. All Pegasus payroll software will be workplace pension reform compliant. Detailed guards are available on the Pension Regulators website. We strongly recommend that you visit this website to ensure you follow all of the correct procedures and adhere to the rules. Thank you for taking the time to watch this short video. Further detailed information can be found on these reference links or on the Pegasus website.